Good evening students and welcome to Baidu's exam prep IAS. Now you all know that with 2023, we are trying to revamp our channel and start many new initiatives like Polity This Week, like YouTube Shorts to make the whole experience of UPSC preparation through Baidu's YouTube channel more immersive for you. Now under this, we have started this new initiative known as Science and Environment Fortnightly, which will be held once every two weeks to give you the latest updates related to science and technology as well as environment and ecology. So if you like the session, do not forget to like the, to like the video, share it and subscribe our channel for more such content. Now let us start with the first topic. First we will be dealing with the environment and ecology topics. Our first topic is related to groundwater yearbook 2011 and 12 which has been released by the Central Groundwater Board. Now according to this report, 12 states in India, they have uranium concentrations in their groundwater beyond permissible limits. Now what is the permissible limit? It is 30 parts per billion which has been decided both globally by WHO World Health Organization and by the Bureau of Indian Standards. Of all these 12 states, the Punjab state, it is worst affected where the uranium concentration is 17.7 .7 times higher compared to this permissible limit. Apart from Punjab, states like Haryana and Rajasthan also have such high uranium concentrations. Now, what are the health repercussions of having such high uranium concentrations? So, the people who consume this water, they can have problems like new nephrotoxicity. Nephro is anything related to kidney or renal function. So uranium is a nephrotoxic material which impairs the renal functions and causes many kinds of kidney ailments or kidney diseases. It also leads to deformity of bones and liver. Apart from that, it is a radioactive substance and it has many cancers that it can cause if consumed in high quantities. Like the most common ones are kidney, breast and prostate cancers. Now apart from that, it has also been proven through studies that in areas where there is high concentration of uranium, many mental health problems like depression, has higher incidence. So why such high concentration? What are the causes for such high concentrations? There are natural causes which are due to geogenic conditions that is the type of rocks that are available in that location. Now there is something called bicarbonate that can exist in rocks. Now wherever there is high level of bicarbonate it is always associated with high levels of uranium. Because through chemical reactions, bicarbonate, it leaches out the naturally occurring uranium in the rock beds. Apart from that, there are various anthropogenic causes as well. When it comes to India, these anthropogenic causes are not related to industrial activities, but related to agricultural activities. So what are the two biggest problems here? One is over extraction of the groundwater for irrigation purposes. Now out of 245 billion cubic meters of water of groundwater that is extracted in India annually 218 billion cubic meters it is used only for irrigational purposes. Apart from that irresponsible usage of fertilizers leads to nitrate pollution. Now nitrate plays the same role as bicarbonate that is it leads to leaching out of natural uranium into the groundwater. So both these situations lead to increase in the uranium concentration in the groundwater. Now previously there have been two major studies that have been held when it comes to uranium concentration in Indian water. In 2018 the Duke University of United States of America conducted a study of 79 districts in 16 states. Now it was 2018 study so that is why entire, states of, entire state of Jammu and Kashmir was considered. Now according to this study 
79 districts in 16 states, they had high concentration of uranium. Specifically states like Punjab, Haryana, sorry, Haryana, Rajasthan, even Karnataka and West Bengal. Now there was another study by Bhabha Atomic Research Center in the year 2021 which actually confirmed these findings and it said that the over exploitation of the groundwater is not only causing uranium but also the pollution related to arsenic and fluoride in Indian groundwater. You can see over here according to the state According to the statistics that are released by the Central Groundwater Board, so many of the districts, they have one or the other or multiple types of pollutants present in the groundwater. Now, the problem is gravest in the states which belong to arid and semi-arid category. That is Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, parts of UP, parts of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and even Karnataka. So why, why does this exist? Why is groundwater so over exploited in India? So there are multiple reasons why this happens. One is, as we have already discussed, irrigation and food security. Most of the groundwater that is exploited is used for irrigational purposes. Climate change is also causing problems in India with more intense heat waves that strip away the soil of its moisture, strip away the reservoirs of their moisture. So that is why more water is used for, more water is needed for irrigation. And what happens? This water is extracted out of the ground. Apart from that, increasing population and more and more industrialization and electrification of the country is causing another problem with regards to groundwater over exploitation. Now you can see over here there are many over exploited districts in India. Uh, according to the study by the Central Groundwater Board conducted in the year 2020, now this the area, the grey area, it was not studied upon. There are 16 percent of the total assessment units, they were over exploited. That is, they were exploited beyond their capacity, greater than 100%. Only 63.6% of the whole of the total reservoirs, they were safe. That is, they were exploited less than 70%. Now, you can see also in this table that over years, due to the efforts by the government and the various communities, the safe reservoirs, the safe units, they have increased in number. Now, what are these government efforts that have led to this improvement? We have the Jal Shakti Abhiyan that includes 256 districts. It aims to provide portable water to the people in these districts, in these water stressed districts. And it also is related to groundwater conservation. Atal Bhujal Yojana that was started by India in collaboration with the World Bank for 6,000 crores. It was basically aimed only at conservation efforts when it comes to groundwater in seven states. What are these seven states? We have Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat. Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Pradhan Matri Krishi Sijai Yojana is also aimed at improving the water efficiency of agriculture in India specifically by using techniques like drip irrigation. Also the Central Groundwater Authority was established under the Environment Protection Act 1986 to regulate the use of groundwater in the country. CGWB, that is Central Groundwater Board, also in association with the various states and union territories, is prepared a master plan for artificial recharge of groundwater in the year 2020 
and under this 1.43 units of rain water harvesting are to be established. Apart from that, it has also undertaken a aquifer mapping and management program so that the future studies with regards to groundwater can be more precise and more intense. Moreover, the Ministry of Jal Shakti, they have multiple awareness generation programs when it comes to water conservation and water use efficiency. Now, what are the steps that can be undertaken in the regions which have contaminated water? The Bureau of Indian Standards set up, sets up the various standards for portable water. Now, under these standards, it is now essential that the water quality, it is regularly monitored specifically in the locations which have this contaminated water. Moreover, there is a need to increase awareness when it comes to use of water, water purifiers in such regions and the research institutes. They need to develop more and more such water purifiers specifically for Indian conditions. Now, what about the places which have uranium contamination? The aquifers which have the bicarbonate concentration that is greater than 410 milligram per liter, they are particularly prone when it comes to uranium contamination. And it is necessary to regularly again monitor such places so that the uranium, so that the uranium contamination can be kept under particular limits. Now we move on to our second topic that is Cheetah Reintroduction 2.0. Now all of you know that in September, first batch of eight cheetahs were introduced in Kuno National Park. These cheetahs, they came from Namibia. Now, ideally last year itself, we should have received 20 cheetahs, eight from Namibia, 12 from South Africa. However, there were some snags in this and the 12 cheetahs, that are coming in the second batch from South Africa will be introduced in India on 20th January. Now this is a global first. In what terms? This is the first time that a large carnivore is being introduced from one continent into another continent. So this is a very big achievement when it comes to India. So let us take a look at the background. Asiatic cheetahs that is the Asian cheetahs, they were present in most parts of India earlier. That is before they went extinct in the year 1952. They were present from Punjab to Tamil Nadu and Kerala, from Gujarat to West Bengal. However, they got eliminated or extinct and wild in the year 1952 due to various reasons like hunting and also habitat destruction because the grasslands that were the main habitat for these cheetahs they were now converted into agricultural lands and they got terribly damaged and the cheetahs they could not survive over there now right now asiatic cheetahs they are present only in iran and there are only 40 individual cheetahs that are present on earth when we talk about asiatic cheetahs so they are critically endangered under International Union for Conservation of Nature's Red Book. Because of this, because of this problem that Asiatic cheetahs, they went extinct in India, India developed an action plan for reintroduction of cheetahs in India. Now we'll see a little background of this. Why do we need this reintroduction? Because out of the six big cats that are present, that were present in India historically, that is lion, tiger, leopard, snow leopard, jaguars and cheetahs, it was only the cheetahs that went extinct. Also cheetahs, now we have talked that they used to live in the grassland habitats. So cheetahs can act as an umbrella species if they are reintroduced in India. 
So what will happen? They are reintroduced in the grassland areas. So they will help in protecting the entire grassland ecosystem. So they will act as an umbrella species for the grassland ecosystem. They will also help us in establishing cheetah metapopulation. Now what is metapopulation? Metapopulation is spatially separated individuals or populations of the same species that can interact with each other. Now what will happen if we develop a metapopulation in India? There will be more genetic diversity that will be available in that particular species and genetic diversity you should note it is very important when it comes to conservation of any species. Also compared to other big cats, the human conflict is least when it comes to cheetahs. They are not known to interact much with humans and they also are not known to attack the big livestock. Now what is this action plan? How did it come into being? Now earlier, India had India had talked with Iran to introduce Asiatic cheetahs in India. So this was way back in 1970s. Now while we were preparing our sites for introduction of these cheetahs, two things happened. One, emergency and because of which the priorities of the government changed. And secondly, in 1979, Shah's regime it fell due to the revolution in Iran. So this plan, it failed. Later on, also this plan could not be successful because cheetahs, they become very small in numbers and it was not advisable to relocate them to any other country. Discussions, however, they again started by the efforts of the Wildlife Institute of India back in the year 2009. So we were in conversation to bring in African cheetahs. However, in 2012, the plan was put on hold by the Supreme Court. So why? What were the reasons for this? First was no assent or no permission was taken from the National Board of Wildlife. Second was Kuno it was to be a site for translocation of the lions from Gir to increase the habitat of the Gir lions. However, this also could not take place and because of that we were now trying to introduce cheetahs in the, in the place of the lions. Third was, according to International Union of Conservation of Nature, it is strictly against the introduction of exotic and alien species. Now African cheetahs, they were exotic and alien for Asia. Asia was the home for Asiatic cheetahs. However, the counter argument that was given against this was that it was not possible to reintroduce the Asian cheetahs because their numbers are so small. So it is necessary that at least some other variety can be introduced. So in future, cheetahs, they can roam around in India and they can be properly conserved and protected. So finally, in January 2020, Supreme Court allowed the introduction of cheetahs in India. However, after a detailed scientific assessment. So the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, it established an expert panel, including people from Wildlife Institute of India, the National Tiger Conservation Authority, World Wildlife Fund and so on. Many academics, many researchers to develop a plan for an action plan for reintroduction of cheetahs in India. So finally, under this action plan, what all is included? One is reassessment of the sites where the cheetahs can be included. And out of the six sites that were shortlisted, the Kuno National Park was the favorite of this particular expert panel. There was a need for habitat management so that the cheetahs that are introduced, they have proper amount of prey to attack and eat. And because of that, 700 individual herbivores, they were introduced in Kuno National Park. 
also there was a need to remove any kind of competition or any species that can cause danger to the cheetahs and for that the leopards that were present in Kuno National Park they were removed out of it there was also a need for disease control so that the cheetahs that are coming they do not contract any kind of disease and for that there was proper vaccination drive for the cattle of the people living around Kuno National Park and the feral dogs that are present over there there was also community participation the community the people living around that area they were properly taken into confidence so that there is no man animal conflict now we know that man animal conflict is minimal when it comes to cheetahs but because there were going to be only 20 cheetahs it was very necessary that it was eliminated so cheetah mitra they were appointed to analyze the whole movement and to monitor these cheetahs monitor their movement their activities their habits and so on also the state of Madhya Pradesh it established a separate fund to provide any kind of con any kind of compensation in, in case of a conflict so finally cheetahs they were monitored not only by cheetah mitra but also by various researchers and specialists so have there been any success stories when it comes to reintroduction of animals in in the other location we have three examples there are many success stories we are just taking three examples over here one is related to cheetahs only in South Africa now South Africa their cheetah population was highly dwindling about two decades ago however there were many captive breeding and relocation exercises within the country that has led to South Africa being the biggest habitat of African cheetahs right now there was also the case of American bison in USA so by 1890s the population of American bison it had reached just 750 individuals why because they were poached for their fur and for their meat however through again relocation of these bisons in various other regions right now the population of American bisons is in lakhs also there is the case of pig, pygmy hogs now pygmy hogs they are very small pigs that are available that are present in the state of Assam now what happened through the pygmy hog conservation program that included the efforts of Darren Wildlife Conservation Trust of UK Assam Forest Department Ministry of Environment Forest and Climate Change and IUCN the pygmy hogs they were brought back from the brink of extinction and right now under IUCN list they are labeled as endangered now we have a practice question when it comes to environment and ecology now try to answer this question as fast as you can how many of the following statements are true nitrate pollution can act as an indicator for uranium pollution India introduced the first batch of Asiatic cheetahs in September 2022 Atal Bhujal Yojana is being implemented throughout the country for conservation of groundwater now which all how many of these statements are true so I'll give you five seconds try to answer this question Now the answer here is only one statement that is option A. Why? This is correct because nitrate pollution can act as an indicator for uranium pollution. Second statement is wrong. We are not introducing Asiatic cheetahs. We are introducing the African cheetahs. And the third statement is also wrong. This Yojana, the Atal Bhujal Yojana is not for entire country. It is only for the seven states that have been mentioned above. 
Now we move on to the topics from science and technology. The first topic is very interesting because many of you must be curious about chat GPT. The context here is chat GPT it is raising code red for search engines like Google and Microsoft which is one of the investors in the development of chat GPT is planning to integrate this system with its search engine Bing. Now what exactly is chat GPT? It is created by an AI company called open AI. GPT it stands for generative pre-trained transformers. Now pre-trained means it has been trained so that it can properly have a conversation with the other human beings. How is it trained? It is trained through a tool known, known as large language model under which under which a large amount of information is actually fed to the system from various sources ranging from various books, various journals, websites and so on. The speciality about chat GPT is that the information was not limited to the academic information. It was also given information from various forums, various public forums like Reddit. And because of that, it, it had a proper training of how to hold a conversation with other person. How to make it look like the person is having the conversation with another human being. Now what are the applications of such kind of systems? One is customer service and automatic emails. Now service industry can get revolutionized by such applications like chat GPT where automated responses can be given to the people and the people, the consumers, they won't even feel like they are talking to a machine and not to a human being. Also creative industry ranging from creating artwork to creating songs and other things can also be in undertaken and actually has been undertaken by chat GPT. Now this has raised concerns in the artistic community which are against the use of AI for generation of artwork. Now earlier it was paper art versus digital art. Now the conversation, the controversy is between human art versus AI or machine generated art. If GPT or any such system it is also provided with voice commands or voice ability then it can also undertake certain functions like sales and marketing as well. Also it can provide assistance in writing codes and developing softwares which are very immersive which are much better than those that can be developed by the human beings. Also, since these softwares, they will be developed by a machine itself, there will be less amount of time that will be taken in their development and also less amount of time that will be taken in their testing. And why is this generating a code rate for the search engines? Now you need to understand the difference between a search engine and chat GPT. Now search engines only act as a path towards the solution. They are just a conduit. For example, if you ask Google that how do I create a pivot table in Microsoft Excel. Now Google will list out the sites or the forums where any such discussion related to pivot tables their creation in MS Excel is available. Now you will have to individually go to those websites that have been listed in your search results and try to understand how to do this work. Conversely, what chat GPT does, it provides the whole solution to you on a platter. It will write down all the steps that are required and it can even create a pivot table for you. Now pivot table you can understand it's just a 
function that takes place in Microsoft Excel. So what are the concerns related to chat GPT? If it is so good, why is the global community so concerned about it? One is, since it is AI and it is learning through large language models, it can ingrain certain inherent biases that human beings have, like racial biases, gender related biases, in India caste related biases, right? It can also provide incorrect or inco incoherent information. It might not feel like what you have asked that is being answered. So however, this is only in very small cases. Also, it will provide cookie cutter solutions. That is same solution for the same problem. Now what happens in case of human beings, we have a team, we have a team of five people and we give them a problem. All five people, they'll come up with different kinds of solutions. However, here, all the problems, they will have a similar solution unless the chat GPT upgrades itself, right? Also, it has been trained only in data up to the year 2021. However, this is a minor problem. It can be easily trained for more data. There are some major concerns related to chat GPT. So what are the major concerns? It can be used for cheating. However, right now, the students, they are already using chat GPT to create their essays or to complete their homework. Many coders are using it to write codes for them. In fact, according to a latest study by Lancet, chat GPT is also able to generate research paper abstracts and these abstracts they are able to fool the human editors and human editors believe that these abstracts they have been written by other human beings it can also be used for malicious intents for example cyber security now many cyber criminals they might not have the knowledge of coding right so Chat GPT can be used to generate those codes to develop malicious software, to hack some place. In fact, Chat GPT has already been used by hackers and cyber criminals to generate scripts for dark web marketplace. Now, dark web marketplace ha is a marketplace where many illegal things are traded, like drugs, like like arms and ammunition, like smuggled animals and so on. Also, the biggest concern here, the biggest ethical in fact, concern here is that it might take away human jobs, right? It has already started coding. It can provide customer service. So many human jobs, they might be lost. And especially right now, when we are more than 8 billion how ethical would it be if a person will have this job, his whole household, his or her whole household can be, can be improved. However, if we give this job to a chat GPT like software, what will happen? Now we come to our next topic from science and tech that is dark pattern. What are dark patterns? They are also known as deceptive design patterns and they are designed, they are various designs of the user interface that can manipulate the user into doing things. Now these things, they might not be in the best interest of the user. Now compare this with something called persuasive design. Now what happens in persuasive designs, the de these designs, they encourage you to take decisions. Same thing, they are also encouraging you to take decisions, but it is taken care that the decisions you are taking are in your interest. It turns dark when the decisions that you are being forced to take or you are being manipulated to take, they become against your best interest. So persuasive design is user centric. It is helping the user. However, dark patterns, they are against the interest of users and they are mostly in the benefit or they mostly benefit the businesses or the developers. 
so they are not user centric they are business centric or developer centric so why is this a news it is because recently the european union it flagged a policy by amazon now according to this amazon had made its its process of subscribing out of amazon prime very difficult in european union it, the language was very con co very confusing and there were multiple steps involved if a person wanted to unsubscribe so because of this flagging by european union amazon had to change its policy now this policy that amazon had initially it was an example of dark pattern so what are the various types of dark pattern as of now 30 different types they have been recognized by the united states federal trade commission here are some examples of them this is not a very exhaustive list you also do not need to know all the names just a few example first is the roach model under roach model it is very easy to get into something and very difficult to get out of it like the process that was used by amazon in european union next we have privacy zuckering which is named after facebook's creator mark zuckerberg and under this what is the what is the intent behind it is that the user has to give out more information than the basic information that is required by that particular website to function properly there is confirm shaming if i want to unsubscribe from a particular platform before i am able to unsubscribe they will shame me do you really want to get out of this you will be losing so many things you will not be able to help these 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 many people so that is known as confirm shaming then we have disguised ads ads that are disguised as a part of the content or constant nagging that constantly an ad it starts popping on your screen and every few seconds you have to click the cross then we have forced continuity under this your credit cards or your debit cards they get silently charged you are not getting information but the money is getting extracted out of your bank account for any subscription next we have friend spam many applications many websites they say that let us provide us with the access to your contacts so that you can you are able to find your friends on that particular platform you gave your accent and then what happens this application or this website it starts spamming your friends with unnecessary content or advertisements then we have price comparison prevention in many e-commerce websites you are not able to compare the prices of various things and that leads to uninformed decisions that you are making before buying anything then we have the last one sneak into basket now when you add a particular thing in your basket sneakily what the website does or what the app does it adds another item to your basket without you adding it yourself so that is sneak into basket so what are the concerns related to dark patterns when it comes to users it spoils the user experience now you are watching you are reading a particular article and every 5 seconds an advertisement is popping on your screen then that will definitely spoil your whole mood right so it spoils the user experience for businesses also just for the gain of a few few dollars or a few data few amount of data this can cause an erosion of a large cons consumer base because the customers they will lose trust in the longer run in the longer run in that particular business it also increases the vulnerability to data and financial exploitation how data now you now there comes a pop up you are trying to read a, a particular article and a pop up appears that accept all cookies right now until you do that you are not able to read the content you'll have to click on that you'll have to accept all the cookies or you won't be able to read any of the content right so a lot of your data 
it gets stolen by these companies. Also financial exploitation like we saw in the previous slide there was forced continuity. Right? So your money is getting debited without you knowing. This is overall also a very unethical practice on the part of the developers or the part of the businesses and they are basically try to, trying to exploit human psychology like confirms shaming. Here what is happening? You are getting a shameful message before you are trying, before you finally unsubscribe from that particular platform. So it is dealing with your psychology, so it is trying to manipulate you into doing something which is not really in your best interest. So what is the solution for this? The first solution or the first responsibility, it lies on the designers. They need to be ethical. Their design should be transparent. The consumer or the user, they should know what they are getting into and what is the purpose of that particular thing. Also, there can be various laws and regulations that can prevent any kind of dark patterns from being included in applications. The first example here, the first state to the first state to have this law in USA and also in entire world, entire world, the first law related to this was in California, known as Consumer Privacy Act, which banned the worst forms of dark patterns like forced continuity. Also, there are there are need to have various IEC or information education and communication activities by various governmental and non-governmental organizations so that the users are aware of their rights. They are aware what dark patterns are, how vulnerable they are to it and if they have been caused any harm due to this, who do they approach to? Also, the governments, they must be made, they must know as and when they need to introduce any laws or regulations against such dark patterns. Now we move on to the next topic, 6G technology. Now right now the world is still rolling out the 5G technology. However, the discussions with regards to the 6G technology, they have already begun. In India, the Department of Telecommunications, it has constituted the Technology Innovation Group on 6G. And in another news, there is a proposal to use humans as antennae for the 6G technology under a research by University of Massachusetts in USA. So first, something about the 6G technology. It is one generation above or the successor of the 5G technology. So 5G technology, it right now uses the radio waves. The 6G technology, it will use higher frequencies compared to the 5G. That is, it will be using the millimeter and the micro waves. Now the latency or the lag in information transmission under 6G technology will be 1000 of the 5G technology. And that means that 6G technology is expected to be 1000 times faster than the 5G technology. And because of that, it will be able to support very advanced applications like artificial reality, virtual reality, AI, Internet of Things and something called Internet of Senses which is, which is going to be more immersive than the normal VR technology where all your five senses will be involved. The standards however for the 6G technology they have not yet been set up by the International Telecommunication Unit. Now what about humans as antennae? How will humans be used as antennae? So some background behind that. Scientists, in order to increase the bandwidth, increase the speed available for the 6G technology, they wish to use visible spectrum 
for its transmission. So visible spectrum is that spectrum of electromagnetic radiation which is visible to the eyes. And this includes use of very fast blinking LEDs. Now these will blink 1 million times per second. So they will be so fast blinking. So this will help anything that has a camera that can see to become a receiver for the 6G technology. However, there will be a catch in this. Now some amount of transmissions they will get converted into radio waves and they will get lost in the entire process. So there will be a lot of leakages in radio waves known as RF leakage. So according to this study by University of Massachusetts, this leakage can be captured most effectively if some copper coils, they are attached to various objects. Various objects like this table, like this remote, this mouse, anything. It can become a antenna to capture those radio waves and send them over, right? So in this research, it was found that the most effective antenna for this particular technology, for this particular purpose will be human beings. How? Human beings will attach this copper coil to their upper arm and they will become an antenna for this particular technology. However, this is quite controversial because just talking about 5G technology, there have been multiple controversies when it comes to human health. So it is very unlikely that any such technology, it will be used in the future. However, we do not know what will happen. So what about India's preparedness with regards to 6G? India is very proactive when it comes to this. In fact, our Prime Minister, he has already envisioned that 6G technology will come to India by the year 2030. So for this, the Department of Telecommunications, it has already established a technology innovation group to set up the vision, the mission, the roadmap and the action plan for developing and for adapt, adopting the 6G technology in the country. Now under this, we have six task forces. What are these six task forces? One, for multidisciplinary innovative solutions. Next, multi-platform next generation networks. Spectrum for next generation requirements. A specific task force completely dedicated to the devices that will be used for the 6G technology. How can they be developed? How can they be procured? Then another on international standards contribution. And finally, funding, research and development in 6G technology so that India does not remain behind the entire world when it comes to its adoption. Now this international standards contribution task force is already contributing, already involved in the 6G visioning exercise that is being undertaken by the International Telecommunication Unit. Next we come to our last topic of the day that is Alzheimer's drug. Now the US Food and Drug Authority, it has given accelerated approval to a Alzheimer's drug known as Lecanemab and it is marketed under the name of Lecembi developed by two firms in collaboration with each other one Japanese called Esai and the other one American called Biogen. Now this is not the first time that any such drug is being given any kind of approval by US FDA. In fact, before this, another drug known as aducanemab, it was given an accelerated approval by US FDA. However, when it came to market, it, its efficacy was lacking. It was not very effective on the patients. So what is Alzheimer's that we are talking about right now? It is a neurological disease. Neuro, anything related to your brain or 
spine. So this is a neurological disease which causes dementia. Now what happens? Some plaque, some plaque it gets deposited in your brain. Plaque is nothing like, nothing but some amount of garbage that gets deposited in your brain and it reduces your cognitive abilities. And this causes dementia in the people who are affected by Alzheimer's. Now usually Alzheimer's is a genetic disease. If any person in your family, in your relatives is suffering from this disease, you have a higher chance compared to any other person from to contract this particular disease. However, even the people who do not have any kind of family history related to Alzheimer's, they can also get affected. And the main reason these days is because of their lifestyle. There can be multiple other reasons, but these days lifestyle is the biggest reason that the people who do not have any family history can also contract Alzheimer's. Also, against the conventions, this is not a disease of the old age. So this is a myth that Alzheimer's can happen to you only when you get old. Even the people who are less than 60 years of age, they can get or contract Alzheimer's. Now about this particular drug, Licanimab. Now this drug it slows down the cognitive decline in the patients. Please note that it is not curing Alzheimer's. It is only slowing down the disease. So this is very important over here. Now how does it do that? It clears away beta amyloid. Now beta amyloid is a sticky protein that builds into brain clogging plaque. Plaque we talked about in the previous slide, right? Something like a garbage for our brain. So this plaque is getting deposited in the brain. The brain cells, they get clogged and this causes memory loss in the people. Now if this plaque deposition, it can be slowed down, then this will help in slowing down the cognitive decline in the Alzheimer's patients. However, there are certain side effects that are related to this particular drug. It can cause brain swelling or brain bleeding and sometimes even small brain injuries. In fact, three patients that were involved in the clinical trials when it came to this particular drug, they died because of these reasons. However, the companies denied that this was directly because of the action of this particular drug. Also, when this drug in, is infused in your body, in your body, it can cause BP fluctuations, flu-like symptoms and so on. So this is another problem associated with this drug. Also, the main part, it is only for patients who are in very early stages of Alzheimer's. Only for them, the Alzheimer's, it can be slowed down. It is not for patients who are in very advanced forms or very advanced stages of the disease. So that is all about science and technology. We have a practice question over here. I'll read it out and again you'll get 5 minutes to try to, sorry, 5 seconds to try to answer this particular question. How many of the following statements are not true? Chat GPT is an AI powered system funded by Google. Licanimab is an Alzheimer's drug approved by FDA to cure the disease. Dark patterns refer to the malicious software codes available on the dark web. And the fourth statement, India has established a technology innovation group for 6G under the ages of Department of Telecommunication. Now your five seconds start right now. Okay, so how many of these are not true? This is not true because funded by Microsoft. This is also not true. Why? Because this drug is not curing the disease, it is only slowing it down. So, it is not curing it. 
थर्ड इज ऑल्सो इन करेक्ट इट इज नॉट अ मेलिशियस सॉफ्टवेयर इट इज अ डिजाइन पैटर्न दैट दैट कॉज इज मेनिपुलेशन एंड फाइनली वॉट अबाउट दिस स्टेटमेंट दिस इज अ करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट येस वी हैव एस्टैब्लिश अ टेक्नोलॉजी इनोवेशन ग्रुप फॉर सिक्स जी अंडर द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ टेली कम्युनिकेशन सो वॉट इज द आंसर ओवर ह्योर ओनली थ्री स्टेटमेंट्स आर नॉट ट्रू so with this we come to an end to our session on science and environment fortnightly so please remember that this session will be held once every two weeks so we'll meet again on 29th january so if you like this particular session kindly like the video share it and subscribe to our channel press the bell icon so you do not miss any updates from our youtube channel so thank you very much have a amazing day